set your serger on a sturdy, flat surface. Your Husky Lock has a handy accessory tray, which conveniently stores on top of the machine's bed. To remove, slide the tray back and to the left. You'll notice a lip on the back edge of the tray. When you put the tray back into place, this lip fits snugly against the back edge of the machine's bed. The accessory tray features an open compartment for storing your Husky Lock's dust cover, plus a neat accessory box. Your serger has a separate foot control cord and power cord. Lay the foot control on its narrow side and firmly push the plug into the foot. Insert and snap the cord into the groove. Plug the foot control cord into the back socket on the right side of the machine. Connect your power cord by plugging it into the front socket. The same switch controls both power and light. Turn your serger on. If leaving your serger unattended, turn the switch off. This is your presser foot lift. It raises and lowers your presser foot. The foot can be raised to two positions. Push the presser foot lift back until you feel it click into the first position. This is the regular height for a raised presser foot. This also releases the tension dials so you can effortlessly remove your work or pull your threads through the tension discs. For an extra high lift for accommodating thicker, loftier fabrics like fleece or terry cloth, push the lever all the way back until the lever stops. Your Husqvarna Husky Lock serger features a free arm great for sewing cuffs, pant legs, and other hard to reach areas. To reveal the free arm, remove the flatbed cover. Place your hand underneath the cover and pull straight out and to the left. The imprinted arrows provide quick reference. Simply pull in the direction of the arrows. The sewing advisor on the Husky Lock Model 936 actually sets the stitch length and differential feed for your fabric and selected technique. The handy LCD window displays step-by-step -step advice for setting up your Husky Lock. It's like having a built-in sewing teacher. Let's review the sewing advisor feature. Turn off the serger. The first step in using your sewing advisor is to select your language. 14 are available. To select a language, simultaneously hold down the A or Auto button and the arrow or cursor and turn on the machine. The preset language is displayed. Scroll through the available languages by touching the plus or the minus buttons until the desired language appears. Press the Memory or M button to store your selection. Your choice remains in the machine's memory even when turned off. The best possible sewing advice for setting up your machine will be displayed in the LCD window. Your pre-programmed stitch and fabric selections are accessible by touching the Auto Mode button or A. While in Auto Mode, Touch the Stitch Selection button, located above the drawing of a serger stitch, to select any of the 16 pre-programmed stitches. The Fabric Selection button is located above the picture of a fabric square. Six types of fabric can be selected by touching the Fabric Selection button, again while in Auto Mode. To enter or alter settings, enter the manual mode by touching the cursor or arrow button. Then scroll through the settings using either the up, plus button, or the down, minus button. Memory mode, or the M button, allows you to permanently enter your own settings into the machine's memory. The speed selection button lets you choose between slow, up to 500 stitches per minute, medium, up to 1,000 stitches per minute, or fast, up to 1,300 stitches per minute. When you turn on your Husky Lock, a medium sewing speed is already selected. All of these remarkable features will be explained in greater detail while you surge your way through this videotape. Proper threading is the single most important factor in successful serging. 
you'll find your Husqvarna Husky Lock is very easy to thread. Master the correct threading before starting your first project. Extend the telescopic thread pole to its highest position. Depending upon the technique, always thread your Husky Lock in the following sequence. Upper looper, lower looper, right needle, and left needle. You can use most any type of thread on your serger. A good quality sewing thread is recommended. Cone thread may be the most economical due to the amount of thread. However, regular spools of sewing thread, large, small, or thin, as well as decorative threads, work equally as well. When using large cone thread, be sure a plastic cone holder is on the spool pin. Then place your cone on top of the holder. This will help hold the cone of thread in place. For regular sewing thread or smaller spools, use the spool cap to keep the spool in place and to prevent the thread from catching on the edges of the spool. Spools of specialty thread sometimes work loose during sewing, causing tangling or irregular feeding. To prevent this, place a spool net over the decorative thread. This applies just enough tension on the thread for smoother feeding. To begin, Open the front cover by pushing to the right and pulling the cover down toward you. You'll notice a convenient color-coded threading guide inside the front cover. The colors correspond with the loopers and needles. For a better understanding as to the function each thread plays in creating an overlock stitch and to assist you in learning the threading pads, thread your husky lock with colors which correspond with the tensions. Let's thread your husky lock for a four-thread overlock stitch Starting with the upper looper, raise the presser foot. Turn your hand wheel toward you to bring your upper looper to its highest position. Draw the thread from the spool. Hold the thread up in front of the guide on the thread pole. Drop the thread in the guide from front to back. The thread will fall in front. Bring the thread down and snap it into the first guide located in the top of the machine. Lay the thread in the upper looper tension discs making certain the thread snaps in between the discs. Continue following the green dots. Thread the eye of the upper looper. If needed, use the tweezers found in the accessory box to assist in your threading. Pull out three to four inches or 10 centimeters of thread and lay it underneath and behind the presser foot you will thread the lower looper next. Bring the lower looper thread through the guide on the thread pole and snap it into the first guide in the top of the machine. Lay the thread in the lower looper tension discs. Continue threading the guides with blue dots. Now, locate the self-threading lower looper lever. Push the lever in the direction of the arrow until the self-threading looper hole is directly in front of the lower looper eye. Thread through both holes simultaneously. For ease of threading, you may want to use the tweezers provided. Pull the thread back, leaving approximately 4 inches or 10 centimeters. Lay the thread underneath and behind the presser foot. Turn the hand wheel toward you once and the lower looper threader automatically returns to its original position. Your sewing advisor uses letters to indicate the needles needed for each particular technique. The letters correspond to the markings on the needle bar just above each appropriate needle. For instance, C is for left needle and D is for right needle. Starting with the right or D needle, raise the needles to their highest position. Draw the thread from the spool. Drop the thread in the guide from front to back. Bring the thread down and snap it into the first guide. Lay the thread between the thread tension disc. Following the arrows, pass the thread around the lower take-up lever labeled with C. Next, pass the thread to the right of the first thread guide, down into the far right slot of the next thread guide, and to the right of the guides just above the needle. Your Husky Lock comes with a handy needle threader. It has a pin which pushes the thread into the needle's eye. 
Place your needle thread in the horizontal slot. Slide the needle threader down the shaft of the needle. When you reach the eye, push the needle threader so the needle is threaded. Pull three to four inches or 10 centimeters of thread through the eye and lay it underneath and behind the presser foot. Thread the C left needle in the same manner, making certain the thread passes to the left of all the thread guides. Again, pull three to four inches or 10 centimeters of thread through the eye. To complete the threading, gather all four threads and pull them through the machine. Place all four threads behind and underneath the presser foot. Always be sure to close the front cover before sewing. Your Husky Lock has a safety feature in which the machine will not sew with the front cover open. You're successfully threaded and ready to sew. Let's use the sewing advisor to serge a basic four thread overlock stitch. When you turn on your Husky Lock Model 936, your sewing advisor will automatically be set for auto A1, woven medium. Auto means you're in the auto mode, the mode in which you can select from 16 program stitches and six different fabric types. A refers to the technique in this case, four thread overlock stitch. One indicates fabric type, woven medium. Also in your window is an accessory message. Use accessory type S. This indicates the standard presser foot and stitch plate are needed for the technique and fabric selected. To cancel this message, simply touch A. To change a sewing program, simply touch the stitch selection button the settings change in accordance with the stitch and the fabric type. Selecting a fabric type is just as easy. Touch the fabric selection button until you find your desired fabric type. Again, the suggested machine settings change in accordance to the stitch and fabric type selected. Better yet, your Husky Lock 936 will advise you when your stitch and fabric combination is not recommended with a message in the sewing advisor window, not advised. The suggested standard settings for each stitch and fabric type are just those, suggestions. Always test sew on a scrap of your fabric to first determine if the settings are appropriate. For this exercise, return to Auto A1 or 4-thread overlock woven medium fabric. If the accessory message is in the window, cancel by touching A. Let's look at the recommended settings. Again, you're in the Auto mode, Stitch A or 4-thread overlock and Fabric 1 woven medium. Your stitch length, 2.5 millimeters, and a differential feed at 1.0 are automatically set for your selected fabric weight and technique. The next setting refers to the stitch finger. The stitch finger is the pin located on the far right of the stitch plate. Stitches form around the stitch finger. For a four thread overlock stitch, your stitch finger should be set at N or normal. Next are the needles. You need both your D and C needles to sew a four thread overlock stitch. Your stitch width should be N or normal. Lastly, your sewing advisor suggests the appropriate thread tensions. Your thread tension should be set at N or normal for left needle, right needle, upper looper, and lower looper. A dash indicates this looper or needle is not used for your selected technique. Now, fold a woven medium weight fabric in half. Place the fabric under the presser foot with the folded edge to the right. Lower your presser foot and serge a four thread overlock seam. At the end of your seam, chain off for several inches. 
Do not pull at the threads because you may bend or break your needles. Cut the thread chain using the thread cutter on the left side of your serger. Examine your sample to ensure your tension settings are correct. The upper looper or green thread should be flat on the top. The lower looper or blue thread should be flat on the underside of the fabric and lock with the upper looper or green thread along the edge of the fabric. The needle thread should lie mainly on the top of the fabric, like rows of normal straight sewing. Depending upon your fabric, you may need to adjust your presser foot pressure. The presser foot pressure lever is located on the left side of the machine. This controls how much push your presser foot puts on your fabric. N is for a normal setting. A lower number applies less pressure, while a higher number applies more pressure. Always test your stitch on a scrap of your fabric first. The distance between the needle and the outer edge of the fabric is called stitch width. The stitch width dial is located just below the throat plate. Normal stitch width is 5.5 millimeters or N. An arrow on the machine indicates your selected width. You can set your width between 5 to 7 millimeters depending upon the type of fabric or technique. As you turn the dial, the cutting blade moves. To practice, adjust the stitch width by turning the dial to 5 millimeters. Use a folded woven medium weight fabric and serge along one edge. Now adjust your stitch width to 7 millimeters. Serge the opposite edge of your fabric. This adjustment allows you to achieve the best stitch possible on all fabric types. If thread loops form off the edge of your fabric, turn your stitch width dial to a higher number. Less fabric will then be trimmed away. Or if your fabric puckers within the overlock seam, turn the dial to a lower number, cutting away more fabric as you sew. Before proceeding to the next technique, return your stitch width dial to N. To secure the beginning of a seam, make a thread chain. Fold your woven medium weight fabric in half. Stitch two to three stitches into the fabric, then stop sewing. A simple tap of your foot control and the needle will drop in your fabric. Raise the presser foot. Bring the chain around and back under the presser foot and toward the cutter. Lower the presser foot. So, catching the thread chain in your seam, and cutting off the excess chain. To secure the end of a seam, sew to the end of the fabric. Raise the foot to release the thread tensions and pull the fabric one inch from the foot toward the back. Insert the fabric back under the foot about one inch from the end and serge over the previous stitching, locking your seam. Most ends are secured during garment construction. Therefore, it's not always necessary to lock ends. Your Husqvarna Husky Lock 936 automatically sets your stitch length and differential feed for your selected stitch and fabric. For certain techniques, like gathering, you may want to override these settings. First, let's learn more about how stitch length and differential feed affect your sewing. The automatic stitch length feature on your Husqvarna Husky Lock 936 will accommodate most any type of fabric. But there may be times when you want to fine tune your stitch length. Use a short stitch length on lightweight fabrics. Longer stitch lengths can be used for specialty techniques such as gathering and with heavier fabrics as well as heavier threads. Differential feed prevents puckering on lightweight fabrics and stretching of heavier knits which may occur when serging. Your Husky Lock has two sets of feed teeth. Each set has an individual feed mechanism enabling the feeding of the fabric at a different ratio. A 1 to 1 ratio, or 1.0, finds each set of feed teeth feeding at the same pace. A lower number, like 0 
makes the front feed teeth run slower than the back, holding the fabric taut under the presser foot. A higher number, like 2.5, is the opposite, running the front feed teeth faster than the back, pushing the fabric together underneath the foot. Try overriding these automatic settings to gather a lightweight woven fabric. To adjust the stitch length, touch the cursor. The word manual appears in the sewing advisor window. You are now in the manual mode. The changeable setting blinks. Use the plus button to lengthen and the minus button to shorten your stitch length. Touch the plus button to a stitch length of five millimeters. Touch the cursor until the differential feed setting is blinking. Use the plus button to 2.0. Place a piece of lightweight woven fabric under the presser foot and serge one inch. Place your finger behind the presser foot and apply a small amount of pressure to the fabric as it emerges from under the presser foot. Leave about a 10 to 12 inch thread tail to adjust your gathers. Neatly finished and adjustable gathers perfect for ruffles around a pillow or for gathering a skirt. Touch A to return to auto mode. The three thread overlock seam affords maximum stretch on knits or a lighter edge finish for medium to lightweight fabrics. Let's refer to the sewing advisor. In the auto mode, touch your stitch selection button to bring up the three thread wide overlock stitch. Next, Touch the fabric selection button to knit medium weight fabric. Your sewing advisor should now say auto B4. Once your technique and fabric are selected, rely upon your sewing advisor to guide you. Stitch length is 2.5. Differential feed automatically set at 1.5. Stitch finger in the N position. Next, for a wide three thread overlock stitch, your sewing advisor suggests you use only the left or C needle. Two separate screws indicated by C for left and D for right hold the needles in place. To remove the D needle, bring your needles to the highest position. With the needle still threaded, use the Allen wrench in your accessory box to loosen the needle screw. Leaving your needle threaded ensures you will not drop the needle down into the machine. Slide the needle straight down out of the needle shaft. Now snip the thread. Place the needle in the sponge in the accessory box for safekeeping. Lightly tighten the right needle screw to prevent it from slipping out while sewing. Unthread your right needle. Your sewing advisor recommends a normal stitch width. Check the tension settings and make any necessary adjustments. You'll notice a blank space for the right needle tension setting, indicating the right needle thread will not be used for this technique. Fold a knit medium weight fabric in half and serge a three threaded overlock seam. Notice your Husqvarna Husky Lock pauses before starting to sew, allowing your automatic stitch length and differential feed to adjust for the technique and fabric selected. The three thread overlock stitch is perfect for finishing edges before garment construction, preventing raveling of your fabric, plus providing a more professional finish inside your garment. Your serger has unlimited decorative possibilities using different threads like metallic, top stitching, pearl cotton, or rayon threads, as well as fine yards or embroidery floss to embellish or edge. Thread decorative or specialty thread through the upper looper. Pearl crown rayon thread is being used here. As mentioned, use small spool caps for smaller spools of thread. When working with heavier decorative threads, 
you will need to loosen your tension. The general rule is the heavier the thread, the lower the tension or number. This is also an ideal time to sew at half speed. Due to the weight of the thread, your stitch will be more consistent at a reduced speed. Simply touch the speed button until the lower setting appears in the sewing advisor window. Select Knit Medium. Refer to your sewing advisor for recommended settings. Surge a decorative edge. Heavier threads may require a longer stitch length. Always test sew your fabric first. When using a combination of regular and heavy decorative threads, it may be necessary to make tension adjustments. Be sure to test sew your stitch on a scrap of your project's fabric. The very versatile flat lock stitch is used to eliminate bulk and seams as a nice decorative touch or to attach lace to silky lingerie fabric. Consult your sewing advisor to sew a flat lock stitch. Select three threaded flat lock stitch and woven medium fabric. Your sewing advisor window will read Auto D1. Now set your machine according to your sewing advisor. Your stitch length and differential feed are automatically set. Stitch finger, N. C, needle. Set your stitch width between 5 and 7 millimeters. Check the tension settings and make any necessary adjustments. Snap on the multi-purpose foot to guide your stitching. This foot has an adjustable flange for guiding your fabric edge, eliminating the possibility of cutting the fabric. Raise the presser foot. Simply touch the red button behind the needle bar to remove your standard foot. Slide the multi-purpose foot under the needle bar and lower the presser foot, snapping the multi-purpose foot into place. The flat lock stitch is reversible. If the flat lock stitch is desired on the right side of your fabric, as shown here, fold the fabric in half with the wrong side together. If the latter stitch is desired on the right side of your fabric, fold the fabric in half with the right side together. For this technique, reduce your sewing speed. This will allow you better control feeding the fold of your fabric so you can catch just the right amount of fabric within the stitching. Fold your fabric wrong sides together. Place your fabric under the presser foot with the fold along the flange of the multi-purpose foot. Adjust the flange to sew without trimming your fabric. For best results, the stitches should loop slightly off the edge. Increasing your lower looper tension and decreasing your needle tension allows your upper looper stitches to lay flat when you pull your fabric. Flip the fabric over to reveal the ladder stitch. The ladder stitch is an equally nice decorative touch, plus perfect for attaching lace to lingerie fabric. This technique is a wonderful embellishment on all fabric types, especially knits, including sweatshirt fleece. Consult your sewing advisor for recommended settings. A rolled edge uses the right needle plus a narrow stitch finger to create a narrow satin roll on the edge of soft fabric such as crepe de chine, georgette, silk, and lightweight materials. Your Husqvarna Husky Lock has a built-in rolled edge feature for quick and easy setup. No fumbling with changing feet or throat plates. Select a two-thread rolled edge. Touch the fabric selection button to woven light material. Your sewing advisor will read Auto J3. Stitch finger R for rolled edge. The stitch finger lever is located at the front of the stitch plate. 
Simply pull the stitch finger lever forward to remove the regular stitch finger and expose the rolled edge stitch finger. This smaller pin allows the fabric and stitches to roll to the underside. Use only the D needle. Stitch width 5 millimeters. Tension should be set at N, right needle, and 5 for lower looper. Only the needle and the lower looper are used for two thread serging. Unthread the upper looper thread. In the accessory box is a two thread converter. The converter has a small prong which fits into the eye of the upper looper. Open the front cover of your Husqvarna Husky Lock. Move the upper looper to its lowest position by turning the hand wheel toward you. Hold the converter so the long arm faces left. Slide the converter over the upper looper and fit the prong into the upper looper eye. Close the front cover. Switch your Husky Lock to full sewing speed. Surge along the edge of a piece of woven lightweight fabric. Use the two thread rolled edge when you want the lightest possible edge. It's perfect for silky scarves and pin tucks. Decorative threads like silky rayons, metallics, pearl cottons, or woolly nylons create a nice edge on napkins, hems, or even pin tucks on a blouse. Pin tucks are sewn along the edge of folded fabric and are a delicate touch for blouses, lingerie, and even children's clothing. You can use the right needle for narrow pin tucks or the left needle for wider pin tucks. Mark and press the pin tucks before sewing. Use the multi-purpose foot to guide the edge of your fabric along the adjustable flange and to prevent you from trimming while sewing. Lower the presser foot and start serging. chain stitch at the end of your serging. The tuck is then pressed to one side. The five thread overlock stitch consists of a chain stitch and an overcast stitch, a standard finish and ready to wear. It can be used for seaming, especially in areas needing reinforcement, such as pant and underarm seams. First, open the front cover and remove the two-thread converter from the upper looper. With your machine unthreaded, add the five-thread adapter to your serger. Lift the farthest right thread and slide the slot of the adapter around the spool pin. Place your fifth spool on the adapter using the appropriate thread accessory. Touch the stitch selection button to 5-thread overlock. Select woven medium fabric. Your sewing advisor window says use accessory type S, meaning standard presser foot and stitch plate. Touch A to reveal the recommended settings. Needle A or front left and needle C or rear left are to be used. Thread your serger in this order. Green upper looper, blue lower looper, purple chain stitch looper, red or rear C needle, and yellow or front A needle. To thread the chain stitch looper, open the front cover. Bring the thread into the fifth guide on the telescopic pole. Snap the thread into the first guide in the top of the machine and then down into the chain stitch looper thread tension disc. Following the purple dots, thread through guide one. Wrap your thread around the chain stitch looper tension. Make certain it snaps into the tension discs. You should feel a slight resistance when you tug on your thread. For guide three, turn the hand wheel so the needles are hidden in the stitch plate. Slide the thread under the first prong and into the first opening. Place the thread behind the middle guide so the thread slides down into the slot 
in the middle of the guide. Then, place the thread into the third slot of this guide and under the prong. Turn the hand wheel, placing the needles in their highest position. The next guide has a tension spring. Slide the thread up into the slots of the guides so the thread is caught in the spring. You should feel resistance when you tug the thread. The chain stitch looper is located in the front of the lower looper. To reveal it, turn the hand wheel until the upper looper is in the lowest position. Push the chain stitch looper lever up, following the arrow. With your tweezers, bring your thread behind the chain stitch looper so the thread slides into the slot. and thread through the eye. Lay the thread on top of the others. Turn the hand wheel toward you and the chain stitch lever will automatically snap back into place. Thread needle C first using the red tension disc. Guide the thread following the arrows into the lower take-up lever marked C. Pass the thread to the right of the metal guide, into the farthest right slot, and in the right guides just above the needles. Thread the C needle, laying the thread underneath the foot. Needle A, or the left front needle, uses the yellow tension disc. Guide the thread following the arrows into the upper take-up lever, marked 5. This threading path is only used for 5-thread surging. Continue down, passing the thread to the left of the metal guide, into the farthest left slot, and in the left guides just above the needles. Adjust your tension so the yellow A needle is N, red C needle is 5, green upper looper is 3, blue lower looper is N, and purple or chain stitch looper is N. Turn the dial so the arrow lines up with N. Before you start to stitch, make certain your folded fabric is underneath the needles. Take a couple of stitches, then snip the front needle thread. Your Husky Lock 936 can sew a wide, narrow, and triple cover stitch. A cover stitch looks like twin needle straight stitching on the top of your fabric with an overcast stitch on the underside. It is a great hem or elastic detail. Unthread your machine to aid in setting up, removing your needles. Touch Stitch Selection Cover Stitch Wide. Fabric is knit medium. Your window alerts you to use accessory type C or the chain stitch cover stitch foot and stitch plate. Touch A for the sewing advisor's recommended settings. Open the front cover. Locate the chain stitch lever. With the needle bar in its lowest position, push the lever to the left from S to C following the arrow. This drops the upper looper so the chain stitch cover stitch plate can cover it. Raise the needle bar to its highest position. Next, according to your sewing advisor, slide the stitch finger to R or rolled edge. Remove the flatbed cover and the free arm, pulling each in the direction of the arrows. 
Disengage the cutter by pushing in the knob and turning it toward the arrow until the cutter is in its lowest position. You will not trim any fabric while chain stitching. Never disengage your cutter for any other reason than chain or cover stitching. Your sewing advisor tells you to turn your stitch width to 7. This widens the stitch or cutting width, allowing the C stitch plate to easily slide into place. Remove the presser foot. To release it, simply push the red button behind the presser foot. Using your extra high presser foot lift, slide the foot directly to the left to remove. With the screwdriver in your accessory box, unscrew the stitch plate. Using your extra high presser foot lift, lift the stitch plate up and slide it to the left. Slide stitch plate C directly back into place. Again, rely upon the extra high presser foot lift to give you added clearance. Screw into place. Replace the free arm and flat bed cover. You will use the A and E front needle positions for the 6 mm cover stitch. Whenever your technique calls for front needles, always use size 90 Schmetz needles. Insert 90 Schmetz needles in needle A front left and needle E right needle positions as advised in the window. Slide your chain stitch cover stitch or C presser foot underneath the needle bar. Lower the needle bar until the foot snaps into place. Raise the presser foot. Following the sewing advisor, snap your thread into the first blue lower looper guide in the top of the machine. Lay the thread in the lower looper tension discs, making certain the thread snaps in between the discs. Place your thread in the first blue guide inside the machine. Continue using the purple or chain stitch looper guides. Continue following the purple dots. To reveal the chain stitch looper, Turn the hand wheel until the looper is as far right as possible. Push the chain stitch looper lever up, following the arrow. Lay the thread along the groove and thread through the eye. Turn the hand wheel toward you and the chain stitch lever will automatically snap back into place. Referring to your sewing advisor, next thread the E-needle using the green upper looper tension disc. Guide the thread following the arrows into the lower path marked C. Pass the thread to the right of the metal guide into the farthest right slot and in the right guides just above the needles. Slide the thread into the clip in the guide just above the needle. Thread the E-needle, laying the thread on top of the foot. Thread your A-needle using the red needle tension disc and C threading path, passing the thread to the left of the metal guides and sliding it into the metal clip in the left guide just above the needle. Replace the S with the C. The C, or cutter cover, creates a flatbed sewing surface. With the front cover open, slide the S cover to the left as directed by the arrow found on the inside of the cover. 
slide the C cover hinges into the grooves. Push the C or cutter cover so the peg slides into the hole in the front cover. Close the front cover. Adjust your tensions. Six for the red, six for the green, and three for the blue looper tension. Place your knit medium fabric under the needles. Take a couple of stitches. Stop and trim your needle threads. Continue to sew. Touch stitch selection to cover stitch narrow. Move your left front or A needle to the B position. Thread your B needle using the red needle tension disc and C threading path. Check your tensions, five for the red tension five for the green tension, and three for the blue tension. A tri-cover stitch is formed with three front needles and a looper thread. Your C presser foot and stitch plate each has three holes to accommodate three needles. The sewing advisor tells you to use the three front needles, A, B, and E, as well as the chain stitch looper. Remember, when using the front needles, use size 90 Schmetz needles. As before, thread the chain stitch through the blue lower looper tension following the purple threading paths inside the machine. Thread the E-needle through the green upper looper tension. Thread the B-needle through the red needle tension, following the path marked C, passing to the right of the thread. Thread the A-needle using the yellow needle tension, following the path marked C, passing to the left of the metal thread guide, and the left thread clip just above the needle. Adjust your tensions. Yellow tension is five, red tension is five, green tension is five, and blue tension is three. So, A two-thread chain stitch can be sewn anywhere on your fabric for functional purposes such as a basting stitch or for decorative purposes. Unthread your machine. Touch stitch selection to chain stitch. Touch fabric selection to knit medium. Insert a number 90 Schmetz needle in needle A 
as advised in the window. Thread your chain stitch looper. Bring the thread into the fifth guide on the telescopic pole. Snap the thread into the first guide in the top of the machine and then down into the chain stitch looper thread tension disc. Follow the purple dots through guide one. Wrap your thread around the chain stitch looper tension dial. Make certain it snaps into the tension discs. You should feel a slight resistance when you tug on your thread. Continue following the purple dots. Thread the A or yellow needle. Make certain your needle thread follows the C or lower take-up lever threading path, passing to the left of the metal guides and sliding in the clip in the guide just above the needle. Adjust your tensions. N for the yellow tension and 2 for the purple tension. While chain stitch or any cover stitch is selected, the maximum sewing speed is limited to slow and medium. Place your fabric under the needles. Sew a couple of stitches. Stop and trim your needle thread. The chain stitch creates a straight stitch on the top of your fabric and a chain stitch underneath. Let's learn more about the manual and memory modes of your Husqvarna Husky Lock Model 936 by setting up your serger to sew a popular edging, a blanket stitch. Use your sewing advisor. Select a two-thread wide overlock stitch. Now, choose Knit Medium for your fabric. Touch A to see your settings. To alter your settings, you need to be in the manual mode. Touch the cursor. You'll see your fabric and stitch selection remain the same. The changeable number is blinking. For this technique, we need to lengthen our stitch to 5.0. Use the plus or minus buttons to find your desired setting. Advance to differential feed. Again, the changeable setting is blinking. Your differential feed is automatically set for your fabric and technique. Touch the cursor or arrow key to the next setting, Stitch Width. Increase your stitch width to 7.0. Tensions. Again, the changeable setting is blinking. The cursor advances to one tension at a time, left to right. Use the plus or minus buttons to scroll through the settings and make your adjustments. As you move forward touching the cursor, Change your left needle setting to zero. The next setting will be the lower looper. Remember, you selected a wide two-thread overlock stitch for this particular technique. This stitch requires only the two tensions. Manually set your tensions and stitch width dials. So, catching stabilizer in your stitch.
pull the stabilizer to the underside of your fabric to reveal a blanket stitch. With perfect results and all your adjustments in place, save your new program into one of the empty memories. To do this, simply touch M or Memory. If the memory is already used, the memory number will blink and the message Overwrite OK will appear in your LCD window. This means your new program will delete anything you had in this memory. If this is the case, simply touch M. If the blinking memory is empty, a memory empty message will appear. If you do not want to overwrite or delete what is stored in this memory, press the plus button to advance to an empty memory. If the blinking memory is empty, a memory empty message will appear. Memories are created and filed sequentially. Once a stitch is entered into a memory, it will remain in your Husky Lock until you delete it. After you discover an empty memory, touch M. The memory number will blink several times. When it stops, your settings have been saved. To exit the memory mode, simply touch A. You are now back in the auto mode, where you can select from the 16 pre-programmed stitches. Your memories are permanent, storing your settings even after the machine is turned off. To retrieve a memory, touch M. The last memory you used will appear with the settings you saved. Select the memory you want by touching the plus or minus buttons. Only memories with previously saved settings will appear. Remember, to access an empty memory, you must first enter the manual mode by touching the cursor. If you mistakenly touch the cursor or arrow button and the manual mode appears while searching for a memory, simply touch A to return to the auto mode and begin again by touching M or memory. To clear a memory, touch M. Again, the last memory you used will appear. Select the memory you wish to clear by pressing the plus or minus buttons. Then, simultaneously press the stitch and fabric selection buttons. The message, Memory Will Clear, now blinks in your Sewing Advisor's LCD window. If you decide not to clear the memory, just release both buttons. To clear the memory, touch M while you continue to hold the stitch program and the fabric selection buttons. Memory empty appears and the deletion is complete. Press A for standard settings. For peak performance for years to come, Care for your Husqvarna Husky Lock like you would any piece of fine machinery. Always turn your machine off before performing any type of maintenance. Change needles often. Invisible burrs on needles affect the quality of your sewing. Often, a new needle is the answer to a number of questions. Use your lint brush to clean dust out of the inside of your machine after completing a project. To ensure the continued smooth and quiet operation of your Husky Lock, some of the moving parts must be lubricated with sewing machine oil. If you regularly use your machine, oil it once a month. Frequent users should oil the machine once a week. Always run fabric through your machine to remove all excess oil before starting a new project. 